Well, hey guys, and welcome to another Interstellar Modeler. As I kick off 2019 here, I'm going to head back to the Space 1999 universe. Okay, well, what we have here is a model I've been wanting to get to for some time. This is a re-release of the Mark 9 Hawk from Space 1999. It's from an episode called War Games, if you're not familiar with it. Uh, it is a design that uh, only appeared once on TV show, but it's been very popular and people have been wanting to uh, see it re-released for quite some time. Uh, the model was originally released in the late 70s, and I remember having the model as a kid, and even back then I could tell it wasn't very well detailed, so they promised this is going to be much better. Let's go ahead and take a look inside. Well, first we have the instructions. Uh, they look nicely detailed, easy to follow. Uh, the model comes with uh, four trees that include all the pieces. We've got the upper and lower part of the main fuselage. And the one thing is I just wish the model was a little bit larger. This is a 172 scale model of the ship. And as the box says, it measures about 10 inches from front to back when it's completed. But looking at the detailing, it does look good. As I compare this to the uh, pictures of the original studio model, it does look a lot more accurate than I remember the uh, old kit used to be. Um, we've got some other trees here. We've got this one that contains the pieces for the uh, rest of the cockpit, uh, some of the uh, weapons assemblies here, some of the detailing that goes towards the rear of the ship, and the spine, of course, on the upper part of the ship. And let's see here, we've got some other trees that include parts for the engines, and I've already taken the part, uh, or at least uh, taken off one piece here just to test fit, see how these pieces go together. There are going to be some seams that we're going to have to address there. And uh, then we've got a decal sheet, which looks like this, and I'm glad they included this. Um, I don't remember there was one this detail that came with the original kit, uh, but I'm glad they included it because there are some parts here that are fairly small that would be difficult to paint some of the detailing, so I'm glad they included this. Uh, the model can be painted now in two different schemes. Let me go ahead and pull out the bottom of the box here. Um, as you can see, it has an orange paint scheme and this uh, plain white scheme here. Apparently, when they uh, started filming the episode, they quickly realized that the ships uh, could be confused with the Eagle from Moonbase Alpha, so they decided to give it this orange paint scheme instead. The other thing that they changed was the paint color around the windows. They made it in white instead of black here. Now, if you follow my channel, uh, I built a a 148 scale replica of this ship way back when. I'm not sure it's been a couple years now. And uh, with that one, I did go with the orange paint scheme, but kept the black around the windows. I always thought it was a little odd that they painted the windows white, but this time I'm going to go strictly by uh, this paint scheme here, which is what, again, was seen on the TV show. All right, so I am ready to get started, so let's go ahead and begin. So the first pieces we're going to start with are the engines, and as you can see, there are two halves to all of these pieces, which will create a seam here. So what I started to do was apply some putty along those seams. And as you can see here, I use masking tape to just keep the application of the putty limited to the seam. Now after the putty dried, I used my X-Acto knife here to shave down the edges that were adjacent to the masking tape. Just makes it a little easier for me to sand. Next, I wet sanded the area, and it took care of the seam pretty well. However, I am finding that uh, a lot of these seams are fairly tight, so there's not a lot of spacing between them, and you can just wet sand them without adding any other putty, and you'll effectively get rid of most of them this way. So I might have to apply a little putty just to uh, smooth some of the ones over that are still um, able to be seen, but uh, wet sanding most of these seems to be doing the trick. And as you're making these modifications, uh, you will need to rescribe some of the panel lines that you see here, which is not too difficult to do. Now, if you do decide to wet sand without the use of putty, you should try to melt the plastic together. And you can do that by using some sort of liquid cement. In this case, the only stuff I had on hand was this Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. However, you can also use this other stuff, which I've used in the past before, called Plastic Well from Plastruct. And just as the name implies, it wells and melts that plastic together, so you'll end up with a nice, even finish. And the putty that I'm using for this project is the stuff from Squadron Products. It is a white putty, and so far I've been pretty happy with the results that it's given me. So for our base color, it's going to be white, and for the first time I'm trying this brand of paint called Mission Models. I've heard a lot of good things from other modelers. And uh, with this particular brand, you're supposed to, or at least it's recommended anyway, that you use these additional solutions. One's the thinner, the other one's this polyurethane mix additive. And the formula, or mix ratio, is for every 10 drops of paint, you add a couple drops of each of those solutions to your paint. And it's supposed to make it flow better. I've heard it leaves a nice fine finish for your model, so I'm looking forward to trying that out. 
As for our model, we have our upper and lower half here now of our main body, and this is the piece for our windows. And if you recall, I'm using this orange, or at least I'm painting this orange and white paint scheme. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this white, mask off the windows while I have this piece free-floating here. And then we'll attach it to our model. I figured that'd be the easiest way to mask off those windows. Put the two halves together, we'll address the seam, and then paint the rest of this white, and of course later apply the orange color. All right, so here we have these pieces painted, and the surface is very smooth. I'm very satisfied with the way it turned out. Um, not quite sure, though, if this is uh, that different of enough to replace what I've been using, which has been the Vallejo paints. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what my verdict is just yet. But let's go ahead and proceed with some of the other pieces, and we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I'm ready to piece these two together, and this is actually being now my third attempt to do so. Uh, first of all, you see we have our windows masked off and this piece hooked into here. Make sure you get enough adhesive in between here and this piece, uh, because as you're piecing this together, that could potentially detach. So uh, that's one other reason why I had to pry it apart. The other thing you'll notice is that um, it comes together nicely throughout here, but there's a little bit of a gap right there. And I just went back and forth, tried to figure out why. The first thing I did was to snip um, some protrusions that were here. They're probably just pieces that were supposed to guide the uh, two halves together there in that place, but I found them to be unnecessary, so that did help a little bit. Also, uh, with my X-Acto knife, I just cut just a little bit or shaved off a little bit here of this opening, and that seems to allow it to come together a little bit better. There is still a little bit of a gap right here. Um, so we'll just have to deal with that as best I can. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and try this again, putting adhesive all around here and uh, clamping everything together. So someone informed me that the seam around the command module would be a bit of a challenge to get rid of, and I agree with them. So I decided to go ahead and use the uh, Bondo glazing putty for this seam. And so we're going to go ahead and allow this to dry, and then we'll work on getting rid of that there. Alright, well once the uh, seam was completed, I went ahead and primed the model white just to make it easier on myself for the application of the base color. And uh, this is how it's looking so far. So the next step is to go ahead and apply the orange color now. So we have to apply the orange color to the command module and also to the engine tank at the back. And there's a couple places along the side tanks that we need to uh, spray on some orange as well. Now before we do that, I uh, wanted to make mention that this little piece here that's seen on the studio model is missing on this kit. Now the panel is there. Let me show you the model here. You can see the panel is there, but uh, there is no allowance for that piece. There's no piece um, you know, that's uh, included in the kit for that. So we're going to go ahead and make our own. And so what I did was I took this 1 16th inch plastic rod and placed it onto a piece of masking tape and just... Uh, cut an angle here or cut it at an angle so it would sit properly on the model. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that in place before we apply the orange color. So this is the piece in place and it's interesting that this piece is missing because uh, you know when you're watching the episode and the fighters are flying over Alpha and you hear this laser sound uh, happening, it coincides with a light that flashes right here. So I'm assuming that's supposed to be the laser cannon. Uh, so yeah, I was just curious that they didn't uh, allow for that. Anyway, it's uh, now time to proceed with masking. So obviously if you want to avoid all this masking, because it can be pretty tedious, just don't go with this orange paint scheme. But I really like it a lot, so that's why I made all this effort. We've got our command module masked off here. Our main engine tank. We've got the two uh, missile launchers that go on the forward wings. And we've got our two engine tanks, which by the way, just another stripe I need to apply here, but I'll do that after I uh, paint these main sections. And the color I'll be using is uh, orange from Mission Models. Well, it's time now to apply some Alclad paint to our engine bells. This, of course, is our main exhaust bell. We've got the auxiliary ones here. And uh, we've got the heads to our missile launchers and so forth. All of these have been spray painted with uh, gloss black. That's recommended before applying our aluminum color here from Alclad's. Uh, 
Uh, one thing I wanted to point out here is there was a mishap that did occur, and it happened because I just wasn't paying attention. I had the wrong caps on the wrong cylinders, with the right one being on the left, left one being on the right, and I discovered that as I was trying to dry fit some of the pieces there and kind of see where I was headed after this, and had to take off the caps and, uh, you know, put them on the appropriate cylinders here. As I did so, however, I ended up cracking one of the seams and opening it up, so I had to reapply some putty and some paint and, uh, you know, do that side over again. So it just goes to show, you just have to be patient with these sorts of things. These things do happen, but, uh, you know, just <laughs> don't do what I did and pay attention to what you're doing there when you're applying these caps. So, uh, let's see now. These cylinders are pretty much completed. However, I do have to paint these um, details here white. But after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and apply a gloss coat because what I'm going to do is... Um, put on some of the decals now that go underneath here. Uh, the reason why I want to do that is because these decals fit into places where this other structure is going to go uh, into uh, place here, and I think it'd be easier to just put the decals on before I glue all this assembly here. So you can see the model is definitely coming along here. We've got the engine tanks glued on. I've got the decals in place I was telling you about. And just a word of caution for you as you're working with this model, when you are detaching these steering jets off these parts trees, just be very careful. Uh, I was trying to be careful myself, and I snapped off uh, an engine bell off each of those. Um, and I was able to reattach them with super glue. But um, it's just uh, awkward the way they're attached to those trees. Um, it puts a lot of pressure on the attachment point here and uh, those are very weak, so just be, just be very careful as you're working with those. All right, well, what's left to do now is to attach the rest of the detailing. So we've got some detailing on the top, as well as the bottom of the ship, and then there are the rest of the decals. along here as I'm adding more decals now. The decal sheet's pretty extensive. It's got all these little markings, so um, I'm going to continue to go ahead and finish everything up here uh, before showing you the final model. One thing I did want to point out, however, before we go on to the final review, is you will run across these decals where you have to wrap them around uh, different pieces, just like you see here, and just like what I'm about to do with the spine here. So what you want to do with that is to make sure, again, that you have is uh, solution here to soften up the decals. You want to flood the area with that stuff and just slowly the decal will soften as you wrap the decal around the piece. Uh, one thing you might want to do though, with stick your Microsol solution in a bottle like this, keeps it from tipping over. I can't tell you how many times I've tipped this bottle over and just wasted solution. So move along here and just bear in mind that there are 100 decals on this decal sheet. So it's nice to have all these markings but it does take time to do all this. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, and I will show you the completed project in just a second. Okay, well here we now have the completed model kit. Uh, this again is from round two, and the kit is a 172 representation of the ship, measuring about 10 inches in length. And I have to say, now that it's done, it really makes a very nice replica of the Hawk. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, the kit was originally released back in the 70s, and before I go on, I thought it'd be fun just to show you some shots of the previous release. Now, my friend Jim Westbrook sent me these pictures, and first we see here a side-by-side -side comparison of the box art. And next we see a comparison of the decal sheets. And here we have shots of the unassembled pieces, and the differences are pretty apparent. Here you can see how the main engine bell, for example, and the tank are molded together and it's divided into two parts or two halves. Uh, this is in contrast to how the new kit provides separate pieces for all of these, and the engine bell itself is a molded one piece, and that avoids having to deal with that seam. Next we have a shot from modeler Tom Gardner, who uh, has a built-up uh, version of this kit, and this to me shows perfectly how much detailing is missing. Just check out the side, for example, of the ship here. Tom did make some modifications to the nose and other details to make it more accurate. Well, getting back to my build here, I have to say I'm very impressed with the level of detailing we see. Uh, comparing this to the studio model, I think it's pretty accurate. Uh, the model is molded with clean, crisp panels, and the quality of the plastic is very good. 
Now, one challenge you do have as you work with these pieces, uh, particularly the tubing uh, that is all along the uh, underside of the ship, and uh, as I pointed out in the video, the, the steering jets are pretty delicate pieces, especially when you're detaching them from the tree. Just take extra care because they're very easy to snap. The other tedious part of the build is the decal application. As you can see, there are a lot of them. Uh, some do have to wrap around these parts, and as I made mention in the video, make sure you have a decal softener handy because that will definitely help and is really a necessity for this. So the model is finished with uh, Mission Models White and Orange. First time I've used those paints, and I have to say I'm pretty impressed with them. At first I wasn't sure that they were much better than what I've used in the past, but I'm really pleased with the smooth finish. Uh, cleanup is easy, and working with the paint is very straightforward. And as you saw, I did follow their instructions for including the two additives, uh, but I've uh, been told by other modelers that it isn't quite necessary to do that. I actually did try uh, on a couple pieces to spray the paint without those additives, and it still applied quite easily. Again, the additives are suggested to make the paint spray uh, from your airbrush a little more evenly. Now, the one thing I will mention, though, is that the orange color, I think, is a good choice for this. It um, is a pretty close match to the decals. I did end up using a couple stripes from the decals there um, on the engine tanks, and uh, I found uh, comparing it side by side versus the stripes I painted on, it's, it's fairly close. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. Now my goal here was to build the ship out of the box, and I wanted just to show you what you could do with the parts that come with the kit, but I also want to mention here that there are aftermarket parts that you can buy to add to your model. Uh, there are Lumen engine bells that you can buy from a guy named Mike Reeder, and you can find him online, and you can also search him on Space 1999 Props and Ships Facebook page. But uh, here's a shot of them, and they look pretty fantastic. There's also a photo etch kit that you can purchase to create a cockpit that is based on a design uh, from Brian Johnson for the interior. Um, it's made by Pear Graphics, and you can find the kit on sites like HDM Autoworks and CultTVMan.com. So in closing, I would rate this kit pretty highly. I think you'd be very pleased with it yourself. Uh, the model is not very expensive, as I purchased this kit for about $29 plus tax, and it can be found at this time online, or if you have one, at your local model store. Well, that does it for this build, so thanks again for watching. As usual, contact me at innersouthernmodder at gmail.com or leave a comment here if you have any questions. See you in the next video. Take care.